Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Hey, hooligans. This is Michael. This is Michelle. This is Jeremy. From Who the What Now? The show about... Strange stories from the internet. And Bigfoot came over and beat his ass. <laughs> he like knocked him around a little bit, and he just kind of went limp, and then Bigfoot left. Pop culture. John, John Fod. Van Clam. <laughs> I, I thought, John Fod Van Clam gonna... was supposed to be the alien in Predator. Mm-hmm. And like did like a jump splits, and like ended up with his like, bats right in the dude's face. <laughs> that, that's his like, move. Do I get the part? In our crazy lives. I'm like, oh, there's a cat on my back. And then all of a sudden, I feel something. I feel a furry paw go down my ass crack. <laughs> Just slide right down my ass crack. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you can catch us on all your favorite podcast applications. Spotify. iTunes. Libsyn. iHeartRadio. Stitcher. Your mamas. <laughs> and wherever else you find <laughs> you, you, They have quality podcasts. <laughs> so don't miss out on the next Who the What Now? now? We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind. So if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazy life podcast. And, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number or, um, go to nami.org or, um, whatever resource you can find, but just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out and try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you um, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink And life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of The Crazy Life. I'm Brian, joining me as usual is Heno. Hello. And not joining us this week is Jen, because she's still working nights. And uh, I think she said this is the last week of it, though. So hopefully she'll be back next week. You know, or, or whatever, I guess, yeah.
<laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you to anyone who's a new listener. Uh, thank you also to anyone who's a long-time listener. First-time caller? Ugh. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Ah, oh, man. You, you know, it's funny. Yesterday when you mentioned that you couldn't record and Jen said that she, um, you know, had to work, I was kind of relieved because um, uh, this weekend was, it really pushed my anxiety. Um, so I guess I'm going to go first because yeah. I'm already <laughs> working that way. <laughs> Since you're diving in. Yeah, there. right. So, um <laughs> Like on Friday, I went over to Tony's. We recorded. We did a bunch of um, uh, the sweet and salty language uh, YouTube videos where we tried different. Th again, it was Canadian treats once again sent to us. Um, so we recorded that, and then uh, Tony wanted me to do a couple episodes, or he wanted me to do an episode of uh, all the beers podcast with him. Um, and then we got to talking and the other beer that he had in his fridge or one of the other beers he had in his fridge was like the first IPA that I really liked. So we, he was like, and it was on his birthday actually when I had it the first time. So we, you know, so we did that episode also, you know, so we're doing that. And then Saturday night we went out for his birthday. Um, and you know, it's whether you have a good like even when I'm having a good time, um, it, it's still hard on my anxiety, you know, because you feel on that whole time, even though there's no pressure to be. It's just how I feel, you know, and like at one point I had to go outside because um, the one place we were uh, at got really full and it was warm in there and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And like I was telling my therapist yesterday. One of the things that really stinks about being five nine is when you're in an, a place where there's a lot of people that are six foot because I can't see over them. I can't see past them. So I tend to, <laughs> I mean, I do anyway, but like when we're out, I tend to look at the, the women because a lot of them are shorter so I can see over them. So I see open space with the guys. A lot of them are taller than me, so I can't so much do the same thing. Um, but eventually it got to be too much. I had to go outside for a little bit and, you know, breathe and all that whatnot. Uh, and then, you know, and by the end of the night I was, when I got in the house, actually when I was standing on the pa uh, porch here, cause where I live is really quiet at night. Well, it's really quiet pretty much all the time, but at night is super quiet up here. So I just stood outside for a few minutes with just nice and, you know, just complete quiet, you know, <laughs> and, and just was like, ah, you know, like this is, per you know, and, uh, I, I came in and, um, uh, I don't even think I turned on the TV that night. I think I, I just stayed off of it because it was, I just didn't want any more noise. You know, I, I needed the quiet at that point. So, um, then Sunday I woke up with kind of the emotional hangover of the previous two days, you know, cause usually when I do something, I try to put a day in between that way. I don't feel, um, you know, on it. Like I was saying, you know, I, I feel like there's a break there. So Sunday night I was feeling, you know, kind of eh about everything anyway, I just kind of wanted to be left alone or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and then I, I, I watched game of Thrones and I'm not going to go into anything here other than it was, it made me very tense and anxious. So I actually had to stop the episode, um, because it made me too anxious. Um, and I was like, man, you know, it's like, okay, well here it was. I was thinking this is the rest day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just pummeling yourself. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> So Monday I had to get up for therapy, oh, you know, which again, therapy is one of those, you know, like when I leave, I always talk about it in here, like how I feel lighter, you know? Um, but it's still not 
having solitude, which is generally how I recharge from these things is I need almost the, like, you know, a counterbalance of, okay, I was out with and socializing. Now I need that much time by myself, you know? <laughs> um, but you know, it was, it, it was good. I, you know, it was a nice talk with her and everything. So that certainly helped. Um, but I still was feeling, you know, kind of not overwhelmed so much, but a little bit. And then today I had to get up and go to my doctor. So, cause I wanted to talk to him about, um, maybe cutting back on one of my medicines and, uh, um, my sinuses and all the issues I have and stuff. So went and did all that, you know, and I was like, Ugh. and, um, you know, and now, and my mom's wanting me to go out to lunch with her and a friend of hers tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, I just don't, Oof. I just don't think I'm going to be able to, I, th I think I, I just have to, you know, not do it. So, <clears throat> um, but it, none of this stuff is really bad though. You know, Friday had a good time, Saturday I had a good time. Sunday, even watching that episode, I had a good time, even though it was very stressful to me, you know, I mean, therapy was a positive, like it generally is, um, you know, and then, uh, although it did stink, I I've had for a while, I've gotten, uh, samples of, um, the antidepressant that I'm on so that in the event of a like insurance issue or whatever, um, I have backup. So I'm not going cold turkey mm -hmm. at any point and they don't get samples anymore because, you know, it's not the new hot medicine from that company now. So, um, uh, yeah. so they don't give them samples anymore. So I was like, okay, I got to make sure I really stay on top of, okay, I'm getting low. I have to get this called in and, you know, and again, my issues calling, um, don't apply because I can go on, um, my doctor's website and also on Kroger. So I can request from my doctor and they'll either send it to Kroger or I can call Kro or, you know, send the thing to Kroger to get the refill. Then I just have to go get it. I really don't even generally have to talk to anyone for it. Um, but I need to just really make sure, you know, I'm, I'm on top of that so that I don't, go without it. Cause last night I didn't have any, uh, oh. you know, there's just nothing I can do. I just didn't have it. Yeah. Luckily one day is not a big deal. Like I don't feel any different. Um, like I had still haven't had it. I picked it up today, but I haven't had, I don't feel any different. You know, if I go about three days, then I start noticing that I start getting really irritable and I start having the withdrawals from it. You know, um, it also helps. I'm on a very low dose of it. You know, so the odds of having like extreme withdrawals are not, not very high. Uh, so yeah, I got, you know, talked with my doctor today. Uh, he agreed to cut me back on, um, the Wellbutrin that I'm on because I kind of want to just go off of it. Like not cold turkey. I want to go off of it eventually. Um, so he, uh, sent a prescription for a lower dose. And if I'm still doing okay, then he said he'll take me off of it and then we'll see how it goes. So, cause he's very much like, you know, he's like, I don't, he's like, I, I, I don't want you and, you know, more chemicals, you know, he's like, you know, he's like, even though it'll, it yeah. can help in the long yeah. term, it's generally not good. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so yeah, it's been, um, it's been interesting. I finally, finally got to the point that I got all, all the stuff on eBay. Well, not all of it. I still have more, but I have most of the stuff that I wanted to get on eBay on. Um, you know, like I, I've noticed that I'm, I'm, I'm getting stuff done, you know, off my to-do list and stuff. So it's, it's been a pretty cool. de decent week. Not great. There was a lot of stress, but there was also a lot of fun, you know, and, and that's fine, you know, cause those are those, you know, if, if, if I get both extremes, I'm okay with that. You know, as long as it's not just really bad or, you know, really good because then I can get burnout. But yeah, so it's was, it was a good week though, I think. So it's like, it's like you need some time off from time off. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it, it's funny. I always feel bad when I tell somebody that I need, um, you know, like time to myself or whatever. Cause they're like, you don't work. 
you know, like what stress do you have kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, I was, I've told people before, I was like, I will, you can come into my head anytime you'd like to. I can, you know, I would love to show you what goes on in there if you, <laughs> if you don't think it's stressful. So. And it's a lot, to me, it's not even stress. Like last night, I just, I, I, I didn't get really good. Well, I just didn't sleep a lot. What's interesting is like last week, mm. I kept waking up at night a lot. Mm. I kept waking up and waking up and waking up, waking up. And then Saturday night and Sunday night, I got very little sleep, but I slept through the whole, the whole time. Oh, that's Which was kind of weird. Like I got yeah. less than five hours of sleep. It was like four hours something, but it was solid. Like I never woke up. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. And so, yeah, but you give me two two nights of you know under five hours, and oh, I'm man. gonna be loopy. Yeah. And so, yeah, we and last night we did our last uh, uh, Gotham Lights. We had the finale of Gotham happen, so we did our last episode. We had some friends on, and it's. It's not like it's a big deal. It's, you know, an hour and a half or two hours of, of chatting, mm-hmm. but it's being on. Yep. And it's being on after I've been on all day long. Right. And so when it got done, I just hit the couch and I was just, you know, I had some TV on and I was just isolating. Yeah. That's and actually what I did last night, too. I was talking with somebody and I was like, I, I was like, there's things I should probably be doing tonight. I'm like, I'm going to go play video games. I was like, I, yeah. you know, it's just, I need that to just get my head, get myself out of my own head. I, I just need that relaxation. So I hear you. Yeah. And that, that was the same thing. It was just, mm-hmm. I played some video games, watch some TV and like my phone is nowhere near me. Yeah. There's no social media going on. There's nothing going on. And I, when I go to bed, you know, I'll say my good nights and this and that to people. Sure. I need to say that too, and mm-hmm. and usually they're they're just like, what What have you been doing? And it's just like, <laughs> I think I finally just said, uh, you know, having some alone time. Yeah, you know, I just, I just wanted alone time, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to have to ask anyone's permission for it. <laughs> right? Yeah, it, it's tough because you know some of us, like I I. I need more of it than probably most people, you know, Um, because like I told you, it is really how I recharge. Um, And a lot of people do. um, But it's like with me, a lot of times I need like, you know, oh, I was out for a couple of days. Like, okay, well, I need two more days to kind of get over it, (laughs) you know, type of thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, but it's it's self-care. You know, and that's, that's, that's where I've gotten to where that's how I usually describe it to somebody. I did it with my mom the other day. Cause she, you know, was like, are you okay? Cause like, you know, I was up and then like, oh, it was after therapy. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go in my room, you know? And, and she's like, is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm like, I, I just need alone, you know? And she gets it. She's yeah. kind of the same way. So she, you know, was like, okay, you know, just making sure I was okay, which is awesome. You know, she makes sure I didn't need anything. Yep. So, yeah, it's it's amazing how you spend so long not like coming up with excuses instead of just telling somebody like, hey, I need this. You know, like I I just need this. And once you start doing that, you know, just telling the truth, it's like it's so liberating. You just be like, yeah, I I just so much easier need to take care of myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I had, I had, I'd blown up over something really silly and stupid and, you know, it wasn't the issue. Yeah. There was other stuff that it, you know, it was just the little, the little trigger. Right. Of course. You know, <laughs> that, that set me off and it was just like, holy cow, you know, it's like, and so like, it was funny just last night was, all right, I'm going to bed early and I got to bed at a decent time and when I got up in the morning and I looked at my, my, my app, you know, looked at my sleep thing. I was like, what do you mean? I didn't even get six hours of sleep. <laughs> I was just, you know, it was like, it was from 11 till six. I'm like, there should be seven in there. And then it showed how many times I was awake in the night. I'm like, oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I was actually, uh, talking with my therapist about <sighs> that too, about, you know, how for a long time I was really concerned with how I sleep generally in two hour increments. And I thought that was weird, mm. but the more I've looked into it, it's not that weird. Cause you know, our sleep cycles are around 90, uh, 90 minutes. So, yeah. Like she was telling me, she said, what happens with a lot of people is you wake up, but you don't fully wake up. So you're able to just kind of drift right back to your yeah, next cycle. Yeah. She's like, with you, you wake all the way up. And that's why you're aware of it. And she's like, yeah. but in the end, she's like, as long as you get, you know, the amount of sleep you need, that's really what matters. You know, which is true. I've noticed a lot of times if I'm able to sleep longer than two hours, it isn't always good sleep if that makes any sense it's kind of weird um i did that the other night i slept for five hours straight i woke up and i was like i felt odd you know like not refreshed just weird so i was like huh you'd think sleeping five hours straight i'd wake up and be like all right you know like <laughs> this is better than yeah. two so i must not have gotten into a real deep sleep or something you know I didn't use my sleep app that night, which stinks because I'd love to see what that would have looked like. I that's the one thing I'm really digging about this is is the the Fitbit is to see oh, yeah. how many times you have you know deep sleep versus light versus REM and then awake. Like I remember being awake, but I don't remember all of those, so that makes sense that you know that it, it was I'd woken up, but it wasn't enough to yeah you know. Um, you know, where I was, I was really aware of it. But, uh, the one thing I like about it is it's a very honest look at how much sleep I'm actually getting versus, you know, where I think I'm getting a certain amount of sleep. I'm really not. And, and what it does is it helps me then with a day where I don't feel quite right. Mm -hmm. I know exactly, you know, it's like, at least I have one, you know, I'm not sitting there going, Oh, well, I got enough sleep last night. It's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you didn't, you didn't get that much. Yeah. You know, so. Right. Yeah. That's one of the things I liked about, um, you know, when I first started using that, I need to get back to doing it regularly. Usually what I do is if I start having, um, like a couple nights in a row where I'm not sleeping well, I'll start using it again because I'll start looking to see if it shows anything, you know, like, yeah. Hey, I, okay. I woke up a lot. I was snoring, blah, blah, you know, like type stuff. Um, because then I go, yeah. okay, that explains what's going on. Cause there's been times where I've used it and it shows like fairly good numbers. And I'm like, well, that's weird. It shows that I did hit that really deep sleep and blah, blah, blah. But I woke up just feeling like garbage, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's been the, the, the one thing that I've, I, I do enjoy. Joy for the most part, the whole, I, what I like is, is there's certain aspects of it. Th like the whole step thing is just silly, but I yeah. do like the, um, heart rate and, uh, the parts where you're, you know, it's where you, you you're, you're exerting yourself and, and you have something that monitors it and tells you that you have, you right. know, where, where it's, it's nice that I realize that you know, when I'm tired at the end of the day, I can look at it and go, yeah, well, you, you did over a hundred flights of stairs today. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, it's like that. Yeah. I, I, I like that part. I like the sleep part of it. Uh, um, there it's really, it's, it's very useful. I'm, I was, so, you know, now that I've had it, I'm like, wow, I'm surprised I went this long without getting one, you know, cause it's one of those things where it was like, Oh, everyone's getting, you know, why I don't think I got one is because everyone was using them with, with their exercise, with yeah, their classes. Right. So every time I was in class, everyone was looking at how much they did in this class. And, and frankly, that doesn't mean anything to me. Workout for me is it, it, it's, it either feels good or it doesn't. <laughs> right. And, you yeah. know, I don't, I don't really track that. You know, I'm not looking at that. I'm, I'm more interested in what I did in my regular work day because I'm constantly moving. Yeah. Yeah. Back, and that's why I think I never got one is because it was just like, oh, you know, this thing, you know, but now that I have it, I enjoy it. And uh, one thing that's been uh, great this week is Jax is like so much better. Good. Like it's just been amazing how he's like he's just himself again. That's and awesome. just having such a fun time to have my little my little buddy back. You know. Yeah. And it's yeah, and I'm sure it's, it's you know uh, quite a relief you know after the stress that that's put you under. 
Yeah. And, and like today, you know, he still needs to be on a leash for a couple of weeks, but we went down to school in the morning and, you know, I, I, I let him off the leash for a little while and he went running and it was just so great to see. Awesome. And yeah, he, you can just tell he gets a little tired and stuff and I'll, I'll give him, it's funny when he, he doesn't want to let me help him, you know, get up on the couch or something, you know, but then there's times of the day where he's more than happy to let me help him, um, <laughs> yeah. which is really cute. But he's just, yeah, he, he's just himself again. And it's just been, uh, like I said, it's just a, a real relief and, and, uh, makes a lot of this, a lot of it worth it. Awesome. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, let's see what else is kind of going on. Oh, I, I played music with a new drummer last week. That was really weird. Oh yeah, because uh, my buddy Dave is he's, he's you know he's he's moving to Florida and we we kind of already set up. He's still here. He hasn't sold his house yet, but we kind of set up a um, you know like the the last gigs we did in um, at the beginning of this month were going to be it. But we still have other gigs coming up and he's still here and it was an opportunity for him to still do it. But, you know, he, he's just like, yeah, you know, I don't I don't think I can do it. And um, and so, you know, we started looking for somebody else. And so, you know, we got a chance to play with somebody else. And it was just such a trip uh, to it's 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 fun to it's it's fun that that group dynamic you know, it, it's, it's always, it's, it's a little nerve wracking, you know, there's some anxiety with it. Um, but the nice part about it is it's not my project. <laughs> you know, so, right. You know, I just need to go do my job. Uh, that's part of it, but there's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, when it's a, it's a, a working relationship I've had for a long time yeah. and to not have it, you know, to not have that same kind of a partnership. Uh, and, and doing, doing music and stuff is, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just different. Yeah, I bet. Um, but that was, yeah. And other than that, um, now is this drummer God, like just, this, part, is this drummer part of the band or is it like an auditioning kind of situation? Uh, he's just kind of got to sit in. Okay. He's got a lot of stuff, you know, he, he's good. Like he, he's a total pro. Um, and I think he, you know, would like to do some things and, and he's just sitting in for some gigs for us. Um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, where, where it goes, I don't know, you know? Um, yeah. so, uh, but at, you know, at least it was, it's one of those things where we'll be able to, we had some gigs set up where it's like, yeah, we need a drummer for this. <laughs> <You> know, <it's, laughs> yeah. It you would know, be weird to, to really go, work, so. you just all show up and you just walk out and there's just guitarists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and the other thing that was great last week was the uh, um, the other band I play in, Doghouse, we had, it was just me, uh, the main singer and the drummer, and we've got some original songs that we've been working on and we had a, this amazing work session. It was so, I'm just grateful to still have have this thing in my life like I had mm -hmm. uh, back in California with, yeah. you know, guys that I, I, you know, grew up playing music with and that artistic ability to express myself artistically. And it was wild. We were, we had, to, we, he had a song that actually had some, um, uh, it's kind of some heavy lyrics. Uh, Tom's really good. He can really tap into like political topics mm. and he, he has become very good at not making them blatant. You know, like a lot of artists when they start getting into, they start sounding too like preachy, yeah. you know, they're like, they're, you can, it's obvious they're trying to deliver a message Yeah, and he's become a storyteller instead, which is really cool. But the music he had for it, it was funny. Our, our drummer, Jason, his son is this brilliant piano player. He gigged with us over the, uh, over the Christmas holiday. He was home from school. He's at some, uh, a music school in New York and studying jazz piano, which is like, like yeah, right. way over my head. <laughs> uh, like he'll play and I'm just like, I don't know what you're doing. It sounds scary, <laughs> but it's really neat. But he called it, he's called the song cute and, and it got stuck in Tom's head. I'll, uh, so I know oh, we weren't no. playing the song anymore. Yep. Cause yeah. it, 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 I wouldn't call it cute, but it's, it's, it has a, a, a liveliness to it. It bounces and, uh -huh. and it's kind of not what it's supposed to do. So I had messed around with it a little bit. I was like, well, if I, you know, if I were to make it really dark, 
work? <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> and so I presented it to him. And, and, and it was really neat to, again, to my experience with well, musicians and a lot of it's even myself is we write a song. We don't want anyone to touch it. Yeah. We don't want it to change. We hear it in our head. Yeah. And Tom is really great. He's the open-minded. He's like, it's not nothing set in stone. Yeah. It's art. It can go where it needs to go. And so I had this wonderful experience of, of helping, mm. you, you know, being part of a rewriting process. And I think that's a big deal because, you know, there's one thing that, that I know for myself, anyone that's an, an artist, and it's not even just art, it can be anything in our lives. Uh, we, you know, we covet things Yeah, we're, we, we we're possessive of them. And a lot of it is from fear and anxiety and, uh, that, that, especially if it's something we kind of have an emotional attachment to, whether it's a job, um, any sort of a hobby to have somebody else kind of come in and mess with it a little. Yeah. You know, you, the way, the way that we, we, you know, we talk a lot about our private lives. Our private lives aren't about welcoming people into our bedrooms and our houses yeah. and saying, Hey, let's collaborate. Yeah. No, it's not. That's you what know? I was going to say is it, this is a, a, like the creative process like when when you're like that it becomes very like intimate because like you said a lot of times our ideas are for lack of a better term there there are like our children you know like we yes you know and it's like no no it has to be like i want it this way and you know you and i both listen to that podcast song exploder and there's so many examples of both ways which is is interesting how sometimes people are like no no you have to trust me it's this you know um, like, yep. uh, Lindsey Buckingham on, oh, I forgot which song it was they did on there that he played off of rumors, um, where he talked with yeah. the different members of the group and, um, you know, was like, just trust me. I know this isn't your thing, but just trust me. And it turned out amazing. Um, you know, but there's also been other ones where they were like, you know, I came in with this and somebody else was like, Hey, maybe if we add this or do this a little bit and then, you know, uh, especially on that podcast, cause you hear it broken apart and then you're like, wow. Cause you hear it without that. And you're like, yeah, that made the song like that. That was the polish on top, you know? So it's, but it's a big thing to let some people in. Cause first of all, I mean, yeah. you know, you've discussed on here yourself about, you know, control issues, which a lot of us have, um, especially and creative people tend to have a lot of control issues too, you know? Cause like you said, it's it, that it's, it's, well, it's us. You know, well, and it's more, you know, like if you if you struggle with mental health issues and and or, or you struggle with anything in your life where you feel like you don't have control, it's kind of a natural thing to I mean, I hate to say it, but yeah. it's it's you, you, you it's a reaction. Yeah, it's a reaction to these this factor in in our lives that we feel like. We just can't get a grasp on. And so I know for myself, I tend to, I, I tend to then and overcompensate in a way yeah. and start holding on to other things even more tightly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I tell a lot, big part of my, uh, you know, I, I talk about, you know, becoming part of, of 12 step groups as I share those experiences, like the first time you went to, you know, college and, and, you know, the teacher said, let's all split up in groups and work together. And it yeah. was like, that was just the, biggest fear oh, ever yeah. in the world. Totally. I actually was thinking of that when you, know, you were talking about it was when I, I first got to college, you know, I, I was so used to in my art classes, most of what I did was just me. And then yeah. I get into something at one of my classes, we actually were doing like a, a student magazine kind of thing. And we had to work in groups to design it. And, you know, so not only do are you trying to help each other, but you want kind of a cohesive feel throughout the book. So you have a lot of like egos that need to get out of the way because essentially kind of one person's look is going to be the, the dominant look, you know? So it, it was interesting to watch some of the groups, like the group I was in, we all knew each other, honestly, from before. So we just worked together really well, but some of the other groups, you know, had some ego conflict and it it's it's really interesting to watch how that unfolds with some people because they wouldn't you know or like you were just saying 
they'd concede on one thing, but then they'd really burrow like deep on something else. And you're like, really, that's the hill you want to stand on? You know, like, it's like, really, you're that attached to it kind of a thing. So, um, but it's understandable, yeah. you know, we've all been there, like anything you're creating or, or whatever, it's, it's very intimate and personal. Yeah. And, and so when we were, we were just, we're literally just, you know, spitballing in music pretty much. We're just playing something and all of a sudden I would be like, okay, I'm hearing this thing and it's, it's kind of cliche, but it, it makes a point. And in to have everyone go, yeah, let's try that. And the the continued willingness and open mindedness was such a great reminder to me that I need to take chances. Mm. I need to try the things that that give me the greatest anxiety. I'm I'm fortunate in that I've done music long enough that I don't I don't fear it. Yeah. I know at any time there can be a really uncomfortable situation with another person. That's why I like playing with this new drummer. I didn't sure. know what was going to happen mm -hmm. but i know i've done this long enough where i'm going to get through it and if there is you know a, a personality that's very dominant you know I'm, i know that i'll do what i need to do yeah but it's so wonderful to have these um the blessed moments where it, it was it's it's worth every time i've taken a chance because it makes it, it's why these other moments happen yeah uh if if i if I was too afraid to go, if I was too afraid of what other people might say or do, I wouldn't be in this, you know, group. I wouldn't be with these, you know, guys in a in a tiny little space, yeah, uh, making some noise, right, and having a, a yeah, it's my it's my moment of the week, and I'm bringing it up because I really think it's something that that I think it's just to me. It's it's one of those things that I want to encourage people to do. Yeah. You know, it feels so good that I want, want you know, take the take the chances and and it's worth having them not quite work out once or twice or three times to have that, you know, that that last time work out great. Yeah. And whether it's work, whether it's a a volunteer situation that you do, it could be something with, you know, I know with um I'm sure with a lot of parents it's uh, groups with their children you know, and, yeah. and sports and, and stuff like that, because now you're with other, other parents that have their own opinions <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, um, but, oh, as, as long as I come from a standpoint of, um, at the worst, I get to practice my compassion, uh, my patience and, and some, my understanding. Yeah. And if I come at it from that angle, that, that's the worst thing that happens is, is I, I, I get to practice some some things that I, you know, that have proven to be worth practicing. Yeah. Know? Right. Yeah. Yep. So I, I think that's that, you know, in a way, it's kind of a win for a week win mm -hmm. for the week is just a reminder of um, of, you know, why it's worth why it's worth putting yourself out there. And as much yeah. as I, you know, as much as I like to have last night where I isolate on the couch, um, fulfillment really comes from getting off my butt. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and doing something. Right. You know, so, yeah, it's the, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, nothing's going to happen if you're doing nothing, basically. <laughs> like it's, you have to put yeah, yourself yeah. out there and it, especially in like the creative spots, it, it, you never know what is going to come out of it. You know, like, you know, being willing to work with, like, say this new drummer, if he came in and he was just like, no, nah, I'm only doing it this way. That's it. Blah, blah. He's, he's going to rub everybody wrong. You know, you nobody's going to enjoy the experience as much. You know, everyone's going to start kind of putting their shield up, you know, a little bit. Whereas if everybody's kind of like at least willing to hear ideas, consider things, all this other, it's like, okay, you feel important. You feel like a part of something versus, uh, you know, the old Metallica thing with Jason Newstead, where it was like, you're playing this, you know, like, <laughs> you know, you, you, yeah. you know, at least if you have some input, you feel like you're part of things. And which makes, you know, anytime we're more, we, we have input, we tend to feel more invested, which generally means you're going to, you know, give more, you know, or, or try harder or whatever it is, you know? So it's plus, 
I'm sure, you know, again, after listening to this about songs and stuff, it's like, yeah, so many things that on the surface, like you hear someone say, you know, how about this? And you're like, okay. But then you hear it and you're like, oh, you know, and it's like they just happened to, in their head, they heard it, you know, and. Yeah. And that's, I think it, I had a, um, our Parks and Lands uh, committee meeting last week. Mm Mm-hmm. And we've been dealing with this one issue and it was it was I didn't have time to do any of the homework I was supposed to do. So we get into the meeting and I'm like, oh, boy, this is going to just it, it's gotten to the point where the, the original mission has kind of been lost. And and again, personalities and this and that. And what was great was we had a light bulb moment. We were in there again doing the same thing that we'd done yeah. over, uh, several times, just trying to get a foothold, trying to work the problem, trying to, you know, just just doing the work is what we were doing. Right. We don't really know what the outcome is going to be. We're just, you know, chopping wood and carrying water. Yeah. And all of a sudden this moment happened. And it felt so good because it's like, wow, these people sometimes drive me nuts, but we just had a great collaboration. Yeah. And no, it's not, it's not, not, you know, it's, it's not the same as playing music, Mm -hmm. but it might be something that's actually going to benefit our community. And that feels really good. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden it was like, oh, wow, I might be able to make a difference. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome. It's uh, also just the, the other approach. I mean, you, you know, you may end up making friends with people that you maybe wouldn't otherwise. You know, because again, if you put a bunch, and it's of, funny. It's yeah, you put a bunch of people in a in a room, and everyone's like, "Nope, it's my way or the highway." You know, but people start sharing ideas and considering things, and you know, fe- again, feeling part of something. And next thing you know, you're kind of like you're invested. You want the team to win. You know, it's not just about your win; it's about the team win. You know, so it's there's a lot to you know potentially gain from it. <clears throat> yeah, the, the one person that I've I've tended to at first butted heads with and and the one person I do practice the most patience with is actually the person that I I probably enjoy the most now in the group. <laughs> That's understandable. Which is that feels very movie like, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And speaking of movies, the uh not to talk about just uh anything in particular, but being able to go to a movie and walk out of there and feel like emotionally moved. Yeah. Is so awesome. Like I, it just, it's just art again. Mm-hmm. I love that feeling and it makes me feel more connected to humanity when I'm having the same experience as other people are. And we're all, and, and then I get to come on here and I, I know I'm sharing it with other people and on, on, in social media and, and, um, it's just things that bring us closer together. Yeah. And that's why like last night uh, doing our last Gotham episode, you know, as much as this was like, okay, it's finally over. Yeah, you, know? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, you know, and I've really been, it's, you know, it's awesome. We get to move on to the next things, but it is, it has brought me closer to the world. You know, there's, yeah. there's, I, I, I had a guy from, you know, we had a guy from Scotland <laughs> I think it was yeah. Scotland, right? Or was it Ireland? Either way, mm-hmm. it was across the pond and he came on to – he came yeah. on and I and I podcasted with somebody because we like a television show. Right? Oh. Yeah. That's what – you know, like yeah. that one episode of uh, uh, The Enthusiast that we – Tony and I did that one time. We had Oz yes. – you know, we're in the U.S. We had Oz from Australia and we were talking to um, uh, Mr. B – who was in yep. England or uh, the UK, wherever, you know? So it was like, it, you know, it's like we, like, it's such a huge amount of, of space between all three of us. It's so awesome that, and then as we're talking, we just, we started talking comic books and all of a sudden we're in the same room, basically, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing yeah. how these things do that, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of, Stuff that uh, that's kind of interesting. I, I really haven't reflected back on my week much, and um, and because when when the weekend came around, I actually got some stuff done around the house. Not too much. I didn't go killing myself, but I went out there and I got some yard work done and put put some Christmas 
just lights away and raked some leaves and, you know, sprayed some weeds and blah, 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 and did some things and felt pretty good about it. But I hadn't really reflected on the other parts of it until just now. And it's like, you know what? It's been a pretty good week. Yeah. (laughs) I think that was kind of my thing, too. I hadn't really stopped and looked back. And it's like all of my head was kind of caught up in was the the anxiety stuff because it's easy, you know, to just get caught up in that while you're in it. But now looking back, I was like, you yep. know, I, I got, I did stuff, I got stuff done. That was, you know, it was a pretty productive week, and and you know, I had some fun. So it's that's can't ask for a lot more than that, I guess. It's about right. Yeah. So what do we got for a topic? Um, I saw this earlier today. I got, I get a like forever ago. I signed up for Monster dot com, and uh, I they send a newsletter out. Which I generally ignore, but for today, the topic of it was five signs you're a work martyr. Um, it says, are you suffering at your job by your own hand? Stop the persecution with these tips. And um, like, I'm just going to kind of jump around the first part of it here, which is I thought this was interesting. It says um, a study by Project Time Off says 39 percent of employees hope their bosses see them as a work martyr. That's weird. Yeah, because I mean, I get it. You know, uh, this because you know so many people are because this is the the tactic that's been used on employees to where because of the economy slinking and whatnot, people were basically places were using the oh well we may have to downsize so people would put in more effort and. You know, because people need those jobs. They're afraid of losing that job. So as a result, then they start doing anything and everything that's asked of them, you know, for that purpose. But there's also some people who are just doing it for, uh, you know, they they want the attention as well as the other, you know, the job security or the, I should say, the feeling of job security because it really doesn't make your job any more secure, you know, um, as uh, Jen's not here, but she can attest to. And that Jen is the type that, I mean, you've heard her talk on here about, you know, putting in, putting in uh, 60 hours a week and uh, still, you know, uh, basically getting overlooked or ignored or let go or whatever it is, you know. So it, it doesn't necessarily, you know, it's the big flaw in this is you show all of this um loyalty and hard work and all this other stuff in the hopes that it it pays you back basically by allowing you to keep your job or you get a raise or a title or a even if it's a pat on the back but it that stuff doesn't always come so <clears throat> yeah and it seems to be when i when i really think of the concept i think of i think of like doing it for all the wrong reasons <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, that's the, it's like it says here, uh, you know, um, work martyrs believe they are too valuable to the company to take time off. And, uh, you know, like when I did it, it was more of the um, I I just did it in the hopes of like moving up, you know, like, well, if I do everything they want me to do and then some it's it's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like the, the guy who uh, or girl or whatever, you know, um, the person who thinks that if they're constantly available for someone of the op of whatever, you know, their sexual preferences, you know, that they will then like them because they do all this stuff for them. Yes. You know, and it's like, yeah, that doesn't, you know, it's very similar in that. And, and the results are the same most of the time. A lot of crying and ice cream eating. Um, <laughs> 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 Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It says, uh, the first part here is your, your, yeah, you pressure yourself to be constantly available. This was one I was so bad about. Uh, actually most of these are ones I was really bad about. Uh, work martyrs often confuse ambition with numbers of hours on and off the job and 24 seven availability as their metrics for accomplishment says Roy Cohen, New York city based career coach and author of the wall street professional survival guide. If you feel a constant need to show your boss and coworkers that you're clocking hours, whether that's getting on Slack while on vacation, responding to an email at 1 a.m., coming into the office on your day off, 
uh, I want to add another one, working from home. Um, you're a textbook example of this ailment. And you should know that rather than boosting your career, you're hurting yourself by setting expectations of your availability so high that you'll be caught in an endless repeat of the pattern. <clears throat> the fix? Reprioritize and focus on the most important agenda items, those that matter to everyone at your company. Make sure you are clear on your boss's priorities and align your work with that list. Your time spent working on top-line items will be recognized and valued by all because ultimately it's quality of work that counts, not the quantity of hours worked. As for the rest of your tasks, ask your boss what you might leave off the to-do list until you have more time. Finally, set some off hours for yourself that you can live with. For example, maybe check your email once after dinner if you must, then avoid looking again until morning. <clears throat> Yeah, those were, like I said, I, I used to do that all the time. I don't know how many times, you know, I'd get a phone call that would ask me, you know, like, hey, can you, um, you know, can you come in? We have this or this. And be like, well, I'm out doing something with friends or whatever. Yeah, I can do it. You know, and I, like, I rarely said no, you know, and and <laughs> what ends up happening is, you know, it leads to the second point on this list. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. I, I th again, I, I, I don't find it. I guess where I'm going back to that is that thing that I always talk about where something is, it could be an asset or a liability. Totally. And being available, I, I like being available for, to be useful and be helpful. Mm -hmm. And I, and I like, I like, you know, saying, you know, that if we have a busy weekend that and if somebody needs help, hey, get a hold of me, you know, but I don't I don't want to do it to sacrifice myself. And I don't do it because I expect something in return. Yeah. You know, it's like the, it's it's what happens afterwards. It's like, what's your motive for this? Right. And like, I want to be useful and be part of the team. But I'm not, but I'm still taking my Friday, you know, it's like, right. it's like, you know, that like, yeah. there's, I, I don't have, a, I don't feel the need. To, I think there's just, there, there are things, there are too many pitfalls Yes. in, in, in those things. And like, one of the things is I don't have, I don't have the email on my phone. Yeah. You buy me a phone, I'll put the email on the phone. <laughs> if it's yeah. my phone, I have access to the email. I can get into the system. Yeah. But it's not part of my device. Right. You know, and that's how I leave it at work. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah, a good and, policy. And my to boss do all that. the time is like, yeah, he's like, you don't, you, oh, you don't have the, you don't have the, it is, no, I don't. You don't pay for my, for it. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. start paying for my, um, part of my cell service. Sure. Yeah. I'll do it. Then, then you can get some space <laughs> on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. There's there's been several times where someone's been like, oh, why don't you, you know, uh, why don't you get the, you know, you like wearing that jacket. Why don't you put the, uh, you know, the have the company's name embroidered on? And it's like you didn't buy this jacket. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, but yeah. it's that. Right. Give me a jacket with the name I, on it. Is, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I like some of these. The I think, you know what it is? I th I think we're going to hit a lot of codependency with this. I yeah, and it's I think about you're right. boundaries. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happened this week that was really interesting is is we have a lot of um, doorways with passcodes for the health club, uh -huh. and and they're usually back entrances the employees use. Well, you know, someone gives a code to so and so, and someone gives a code to so and so, and then next thing you know, everybody's using this doorway, right? Yeah. So they'll shut it down. And usually they send out the codes to you know, like the our group because the maintenance guys will get will get a code, and so and so will get a code. And I didn't have one. I got into work on Sunday. There was a notice on there. There wasn't an email. I have a key to the door, so I keyed the door. And when someone came up to me and said, "Oh, Hannah, have they changed the?" Law? I said, "Yeah, they have. Do you have the code?" "Nope, I don't." And so today, my GM asked me if I wanted it, and I said, "No, I don't want it." Yeah. Like the only reason I should be going through that door is if I'm at work. Right. And if I'm at work, I have a key. And if I'm not at work and I'm walking in the health club, I should be walking through the front door because now I'm a 
member. Yeah. And, and, and I, and the plus I have plausible that way. If somebody asks me, do you have the code? I have plausible deniability. Nope. I don't. Totally. Yeah. That <laughs> and, was what I thought of as, as soon as you said about it. it. Nope. Yeah. That's a, I, I like that plan. Cause like right? you said, it's not like you don't have a way so, in. It'd be different if you had no other yeah. way in, you know? And I'm bringing this up because I, I shared this with a couple of my coworkers. I said, you know, if, if, you know, Derek, who's the general manager of the health club, I kind of would, uh, I th- kind of see his, his point is that the only people that should be going through that door are people who have business going through that door. Mm-hmm. And that means because two of my coworker, my GM and one of my coworkers, they use the locker rooms and they go in the health club all the time and they go through that way. Uh-huh. And I'm like, when I go to use the health club, I go through the front desk and I have a key, you know, um, you know, a um, barcode yeah. and I scan the barcode that I'm here in the health club. I'm not in the health club as an employee. I'm in the health club as a member. Right. And and the reason I'm bringing this up is those are examples of boundaries. Mm-hmm. And I've learned to appreciate boundaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it makes life really easy. And a lot of this thing about about being available is blurring boundaries. It is. You're right. That's what, you know, again, that's what we saw with Jen, you know, just going back to her example when she's working tons of hours and you've heard her talk on here about how she's like, I can't keep doing this. Like I have to, what, and it's like, yeah, you do that. That's what happens is eventually as the second point here, uh, is you're often stressed out, uh, which makes sense because you're constantly you know, working and you're worried about, you know, how you appear to other people and you're worried about, you know, impressing people and all this. But it says in the that study, uh, work martyrs more commonly reported feeling stressed at the office in comparison with their counterparts. Since work martyrs typically sacrifice their own physical, emotional, and psychological needs for the job, high levels of work stress can ensue, contributing to poor health, poor decision making, and job burnout. Uh, stress can manifest itself as headaches or insomnia or even more frequent inflections in your, or if your stress hormones are high enough to suppress your immunity. The truth is that work martyrs often look and are unhealthy. The fix. Exercise is a great stress buster, so make it a regular and sacred event. For example, maybe eat lunch at your desk and take a power walk with a coworker who will help keep you accountable or consistently attending or consistently attend a cycling or yoga class on your way home from the office. Cohen says other ways to reduce work stress includes uh, picking up hobbies such as meditation, gardening, or tennis to provide a positive interest that you can direct your obsessive personality toward. The one, the one they, they uh, since we've brought up Jen, there, you know, she has shared about uh, times in her office where she's just been like, and um, I'm done. I'm going. Yeah. You yep. know, looks at the watch and, and they're like, what do you mean you're going? We still have my shift's over. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. and, and th- that's a great example of, of, of setting a boundary. Yes. This is not some vague, you know, and it's a, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, before we get on the podcast, we tend to do a lot of catching up and work is always a thing. Mm. And one of the things that we talk a lot about is about company policies. Yeah. I do not like vague company policies. Nor do I. Yeah. They I've... should be very clear cut yep. because if they're vague, then they will be applied arbitrary, arbitrarily and capriciously, yep. meaning at somebody else's whim. Willy nilly. And <laughs> if I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another way of calling it is, yeah. yeah. And the thing with this is is again this whole the stress the stress doesn't come from the work. The stress comes from I'm not getting mine. Yeah. Why am I not getting my recognition? Mm-hmm. And so they say go I I this is where I disagree. Go do some um physical activity, go take a walk. Quit quit taking on like it's something personal um some measure of who you are as a human being yeah and if you got enough attaboys and why aren't they recognizing my sacrifice right to me it's an inside job not an outside on the trail job (laughs) (laughs) i agree i mean not that we would you know 
discourage somebody going for a walk on their lunch hour. No, of course. I've, Something that bugged yeah. me a little bit, though, too, and I've said this on here to Jen and various other people, is don't eat your lunch at your desk. Leave your Jen. desk. Again, boundaries. You work at your desk. You eat somewhere else. Well, even if it's in your car, go somewhere else because that time is your time. You know, it's different if you absolutely we have to created, or whatever, you know. Yeah, we, we created it as a policy, which was great that our GM did this, is if you're a salaried employee, you can eat at your desk. Yeah, that makes sense. Because the hours don't apply to you. Yeah. But if you're in an hourly employee, you have no business sitting there. Yeah. You clock out and you walk away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I and I, I was like, right on. That's yep. how it should be. Yeah, I, I agree. I because I, I, if if you sit at your desk, and this goes back even to the episode of um, Angela's Awesome Podcast that you guys did, where you talk about enjoying your food. Um, you know, it's like that, yeah, that's the other if thing. you're eating at your desk. You, well, first of all, there's there's some issues. Any sort of distracted eating can lead to overeating. Uh, mindless snacking, blah, blah, all that kind of stuff too. Um, but you know, you, if you're there for X amount of hours and you get an hour or half hour or whatever it is for lunch, it's like, go take that time as your reset, you know, enjoy your lunch, you know, get away from the desk for a few minutes, quit looking at the computer, you know, do whatever it is. Even if you're looking at your phone or doing a puzzle or whatever it is, you know, go anywhere else and do you know, eat your lunch, enjoy yourself is, and then come back because at that point you can come back kind of like with a, you know, you've taken a break. You, you can then have a refreshed look at things. If you sit at your desk, I, it feels like, I don't know, maybe it's not true. I don't know, but I feel like you hit burnout easier because you're not taking a, a minute to walk away. It's kind of like, you know, if you just keep staring at your computer, but you don't stop and look away at some point, your eyes start burning and you can't figure out why they're dry, <laughs> you know, type of thing. It's like, well, you didn't take a break. You need to, you know, plus uh, just for health reasons, you know, you get up and walk away from your desk because, you know, uh, excessive sitting can be really bad for you. So. Get up. But we've actually get some. Blood we've pumping. implemented a policy: is if if someone's on lunch break, you don't talk about work. Oh, I love that. I love that a lot. I love it too because yeah. I'll have a coworker walk in and I'll be sitting there. I I usually eat. I take lunch on, in our, in our boardroom, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting at the table. And someone will walk in and and they'll look and they'll turn around and walk out and I'm like, what is it? You know, just because <laughs> it's, if it's a silly question, I'll answer the question. And 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 like, nope, we're not supposed to talk about. Because yeah. here's the thing. It just reminds me of Fast Times at Richmond Time. Well, if it's my, our time and my time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole Mr. Hand thing. Yeah. You know? like, but that's the thing is like lunchtime is my time. Yep. I'm not getting paid. I'm not talking about work. Yeah. And and I like that. It's Those are the boundaries that are set. And it's a simple request for a half an hour. Yeah. I'm not talking about work. Yeah, and they'll they'll someone will come in. They'll need some door unlocked, and someone will look over at me, and I love it. Right in front of a client, someone will say, "Well, Hannah's having lunch right now. When he's done, he can come help you." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, thank you." Yeah, that is me being valued. Yeah, you know. Yep, I like that because uh, like when... no one's gonna value for killing yourself. <laughs> no, right? Yeah, exactly. Because it, it's one of those things that you know. Uh, People like, I mean, honestly, the way I've been and stuff and other people, it's like the type that do this, you get yourself crowned just into a fine paste into the ground. Yes. And they just exactly. get another one. It's, 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 it's a oh, beast yeah. of burden scenario. You know, you work the donkey until it dies and then you get another donkey. You don't, you know, you don't go, oh, you know what? We've worked this donkey for a long time. Let's give it a nice, you know, uh, you know, life out at pasture or whatever, you know. Uh, it, it's like, oh, it's, you know, nope, keep working it till it's dead. And then we buy a new one. That's exactly yeah. what, you know, jobs or, uh, companies do too, you know, and whether they're more uh, humane or not, it's still the truth is if you let them work you into the ground, they'll work you into the ground. Cause why wouldn't they? Yeah. You know, that's, that's exactly, you know, that was what, that's what Jen would always say. Yeah. 
you are establishing the rules. Yep. By by, if you're going to work yourself in the ground, you're telling everyone that this is who I am and this is what you can do to me. Yeah. Which is always fun when you switch, like you had said about the the example of her switching to the like, okay, my shift's over, I'm out of here, because then people are like, what? But you know, like you're always the one who stays well, or whatever. Well, how how can you do? That? Yeah. Like, or, or just that idea of like, 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 if 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 I keep giving this up, then they'll expect it of me. Yeah, because that is exactly what it is. You know, the, the yeah. you go in there and they go, "Hey, can you do this?" And you know, like, oh, what was it? It's some movie. I can't think of the name of the movie now. Someone, there's a a thing like the guy draws a line in the sand and says, "Don't cross that line." Someone crosses and says, "Okay, don't cross that line." They take a step back. <laughs> they take another step back. Don't cross that line, and it just continues. And that's yeah. exactly what's going on is they will just keep crossing until you finally go, no, you know, like that's it. No more lines. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is a, this is a really good point when you mentioned the codependency thing. I didn't even think about it from that standpoint, but it, it makes so much sense. Uh, the next one here is you don't totally trust your coworkers to do their jobs. Is one of the th reasons your job is so time consuming and stressful because you're basically doing the work of another person or two or three. You need to assess why your plate is so full and whether it's a problem of your own making. It's one thing if you're taxed because your boss hasn't been able to replace Susie since she quit six weeks ago. But if you're doubled up when there's another person who's supposed to be doing the job, that's quite another. Uh, work Martyr believes herself to be the only person at the company who can do her job and often thinks she can do other jobs better than her colleagues. Regardless of whether your feeling of self-importance is legit, it's likely counterproductive. You're enabling your slacker colleague. You're insanely busy. And you're probably irritating your colleagues, even the ones who, whose work you're doing. Work martyrs often need, have a need to gain esteem by being in the victim position, says Eileen Marcus, CEO of Aligned Workspace in or Workplace, I'm sorry, in New York City, and the author, author boy, of Managing Annoying People. <laughs> That's a great book. I, I kind of want to read that book. <laughs> um, great title. It is. Their intent is to get noticed, and they will annoy others to no end with their tales of workplace drama. Which, oh, that's so true. Because you could just picture people, like, doing all the work and then telling everybody how they have to always do all the work. To do all the work. Exactly. Yeah. And, again, it's like <laughs> you are making a choice yeah. to do all that work. Yeah. It is a choice. You know, especially if nobody asked you to do it, that's your choice. And yeah. once you chose that, now you set the pathway. Now, I'm – Yes, there are poor managers. Yes. There are people that ma poorly manage their departments and their people or supervisors and stuff. Okay, so leaving all that aside, yeah. <laughs> you know, the fact that that somebody is just poor, you know, you're stuck with someone that's poorly trained and all that, you know, those are that's that's a different thing. That's a that's a business organizational issue. Yeah. But if you keep counting the freaking items that the person has in the nine items or less line, <laughs> you might have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If that is such a concern, you know, that, that's how I look at it. It's your, your, what it is, is it's, it's inventory taking. Mm -hmm. It's take somebody else's inventory. Yeah. You are judging somebody else. Yes. Yep. That's and, exactly what it is. Yep. And it's like one thing that I had to learn is just because I would do something differently doesn't mean my way is better. It's yes. just different. Yep. That's that's a really tough lesson to learn. I had to learn the same thing um, because I used to do that like at the places I would work. You know, like a manager would come in and they want things done this way. And I'm like, no, this is the way it's done, you know, kind of a thing. And they're like, well, not anymore this is the way it's done type of a situation. And then it's, you know, um, and you butt heads because neither of you is willing to give because, you know, you want to be right at that point. You know, it's about well, control yeah. and being right and uh, <clears throat> other forms of distorted thinking. Um, had to get that in there for you. So, yeah. Um, 
It says here the fix instead of fixing or yeah, instead of flying the martyr flag, do this. Smile, take a deep breath, and ask a coworker unapologetically, "Hey, can you please help me with this?" It's like diving in a cold pool or starting a diet, Marcus says. It's never an opportune time. You just have to start. If you feel you need help getting yep. comfortable asking for help, try talk therapy. It could help not only with the work issues, but also with understanding other parts of your life in which you might be taking up slack for others. If guilt is your constant companion, therapy could also teach you how to enforce boundaries and let go of problems and tasks that weren't even yours to begin with. And it's this, these things breed the codependent cycles where you're there. It's resentment. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you look at, you, you expect you do something. You expect a result. You expect other people to react a certain way. Yeah. When they don't react that certain way, now you resent them. <laughs> yeah. And then the next time it comes around, okay, fine. I, I, I have to be the one to do this because no one else will do it. Yeah. I'm the only one and who does it right. Then, <laughs> yeah. And then you don't, and nobody respects you again in the resentment. And there's a reason why there's, you know, they, mm. they, they typically use lots of circles and cycles and <laughs> there's the triangles and, and you go from one step to the other and yeah, yeah, there, it, it, look it up. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of, um, like, you know, when you're in school or work, whatever, um, and, you know, you get put into groups to do something. And, like, sometimes you'll be in a group where everybody. Yeah, next thing you know, one person's doing. Yeah. yeah but one person will just do yeah. the stuff. Like, no one's asked them to. No oh, one yeah, else is slapped up. They just start no, doing yep. it. But yep. then they also yep. want all of the credit. And it's like, well, we were here. We would have helped you. Like, you didn't have yeah. to kill yourself to do this stuff. You know, like, we gladly would have helped. Yeah. In fact, we offered and you said no, you know, like that kind of stuff. And it's it's frustrating because it's like you were just doing that because you want the uh, credit like you you want the adoration for it. Well, you know, again, you're you're playing martyr because you want to. Oh, man, wow. You did all of it yourself. You know, it's like, ugh. <laughs> like it gets old. Um. <clears throat> The next one on here is you think asking for help makes you seem inept. I've seen this one so many times. Uh, it says, when was the last time you told your boss you were underwater and needed help prioritizing? If you can't remember, that's not a good sign, according to the project time off study. Work martyrs tend to get less help from colleagues or their boss, even when they need it. You're probably falsely equating asking for help to slacking off and or incompetence. Or maybe you think you have something to prove by handing everything seamlessly with a smile on your face. I think that's supposed to be handling. It says handing. <laughs> you don't. In either case, you'll probably drive yourself toward drowning by not sending out an SOS. It could lead to the boss thinking, if Sam can handle this load of work so easily, why not give him more? Hmm. Boundaries. Uh, plus, here's a reality check. Bosses respect people who put quality first and recognize when they're being pushed to the limits of delivering quality work. The fix. Ask your boss if you can enlist a coworker to help you uh, with the routine tasks so you can focus on prioritized tasks, says Linda F. Williams, a life coach in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and author of Whose Apple Is It Anyway? Diane Gotsman, a business etiquette expert, owner of the Protocol School of Texas in San Antonio, and author of Modern Etiquette for a Better Life, seconds this approach of seeking a way to offload some duties. This allows coworkers to feel invested and collaborate with you on how to better achieve your goals. Plus, it lets your boss know you may be overtasked. Also, make a regular habit of running through what you're working on with your boss. As part of the agenda, Note which things you're going to prioritize and say, if I have to let something slide to accomplish X, do you agree that it should be Y? That's that's one tool I like to use. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk in and say, okay, this is what I've got. What's what what's your preference? Yeah. I've got I've got these things to do. Because you're letting the person know that you're aware of them, mm -hmm. that you're willing to work on them. 
and you're you're checking in and saying, okay, I want to make sure that that I'm doing it, this in a way that I have an opportunity to succeed. Yeah. So, because one of the worst things that you know, if if, if again, I'm like. There's nothing you can do if you work for a petty tyrant. <laughs> and <laughs> if true. you don't know what that means, look it up. Yeah. Uh, there's there's certain things that are very difficult, but take just calling a somewhat normal workplace <laughs> where people actually <laughs> right. listen to you, <laughs> yeah. making and that nobody's actually out to screw you. <laughs> you know, like they they purposely. But the idea that you can walk in and and that you set yourself up for success rather than failure mm-hmm. sometimes takes something we need to do for ourselves. Yeah, because because it's not because if you play a martyr, you tend to feel like you have to do everything on your own, and so you yeah. don't reach out, and so you're more likely to not check in and make sure that you are on a path to success rather than failure, yeah. because there's nothing worse than going along and along and along, and someone says, hey, I never asked you to do all that stuff. Get back to what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, well, who, you know, was it you or was it them? Yeah. I also look at it as though- We always play a part. Oh, totally, yeah. I always saw it as it's like, okay, if you have, like you were saying, it's like, okay, you see you have 10, 10 blocks in the day, don't pick up 12, you know? And hmm. it's, you know, especially if there's other people around with eight, you know? Like, yeah. and that's exactly that's what's happening here is just make it a math problem. You have more than you can handle. Now, here's the thing is most people go, well, if I take all this on, it'll look impressive because of blah, blah, blah. But what happens when you don't get A, B, C done? And especially if one of those things is what should have been a priority, you know, or whatever, then you're going to look like the person who can't get th- uh, can't get things done. Instead of looking like the person who can get it all done, you look like you know you you've had a counter uh, a counterproductive effect on yourself, you know. So it's like it just it it. It always reminds me of, um, you know, like when, when I was brought up, um, as far as eating, you know, as ta- putting food on our plate, you know, my mom was always, you know, put a little on your plate. If you want more, you can have more, but don't put a ton of food on your plate that then is going to end up in the trash or, or whatever, you know? And I kind of feel like it's the same thing is like, you know, don't bite off more than you can chew. It's the, however you want to look at it. It's all that same stuff. It's like. Be reasonable, especially if there's other people standing around willing to do that work or not even just willing, but if it's their job to do that work, you know, like, yeah, maybe your job also, but if you have five people and there's five things to do, each of you could take a task. One person doesn't have to do five things, you know, like that doesn't make you better than everybody else. Honestly, it just makes you, it makes you dumber than everybody else. (laughs) You're not working smart at that point. So. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> um, the the next one. Well, I didn't even get to this one, but yeah. Uh, the next point on here is your extra efforts don't seem to actually pay off. So you're putting in sixty hour weeks and you haven't seen a vacation day since 2017, but you've crossed everything off your to do list. Are you feeling happy? Are you doing it all because you want to? Has anyone else expressed happiness at all that you're doing? Have you gotten a raise or a promotion in the past year that recognized your efforts to go above and beyond? The Project Time Off study says work martyrs added efforts often fail to translate translate into them earning as much money as coworkers who take their vacation time, work normal hours, and create good boundaries with their personal life. So take a hard, critical look at the results of your efforts. If there is not a fair return on investment for the extra blood, sweat, and tears you're putting in, You've got a problem. And others may not be seeing you in the best light either. When you appear to spend more time than everyone else, and you have not necessarily accomplished significantly more, you may be seen as deficient, which is what I was just saying. Um, The fix says, during one of your regular run-throughs with the boss, come prepared with a list of your accomplishments and ask if she has a moment to discuss your performance. If she's thrilled, ask about the possibility of a raise or promotion. If you don't ask for it, you won't get it. 
uh, if she's less than thrilled, ask if she can help you draft work goals that will lead to advancement. And remember that a bump in compensation is most likely going to result from showing that you know how to manage your time at the office while also being able to va- to use your vacation days. And mm. yeah, it, it's that's kind of what I was getting at. And I've seen that happen where people, if they, they take on all the things they can take on. And then when they don't get things accomplished, the boss goes, well, you said you could handle it. And next thing you know, they don't trust you the next time that mm. they want. And so all that, all that hard work and sweat and all that, that you're putting into this ends up not getting you where you want to be. Cause you want to be the one that they, you know, you want, if you, especially if you want the, um, you know, the kudos for everything. If you, you know, end up at that point, you end up in the doghouse instead of, you know, yeah. as their right hand. <clears throat> and let's see, the last one on here is um, get some help getting out of there. If all your efforts to relieve yourself of the work martyr badge fall short, it's time to look for a new job. One where your hard work will be appreciated and rewarded and you won't have to suffer in vain. And then, yeah, like the next part is like selling you on monster.com. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a, a, a good point because, uh, you know, sometimes people just need a change of scenery. Again, a reset. Yeah. Um, like I realized I was working at that family video and I ran the store for six months I, you know, with, with other people, I mean, it wasn't just me, but it was, you know, that I was looked at as the person running the store. I did that for six months. All of our numbers stayed where they were supposed to. I did all the things that a manager would do when a new general manager took over and a new store manager took over. I wanted to be promoted to assistant manager be thinking, I just ran the store for six months. I'm pretty sure I'm overqualified now for I like I should be like looked at for store manager kind of situation, you know. So I asked I you know, I went to my uh district manager and I said, "Hey, um I just busted my my hiney for all this time. Uh the numbers were really good. I did all the things blah blah blah. I feel like I should be promoted because, you know, and his response was, well, we haven't seen enough out of you. <laughs> and then he goes, and we had a, the rest of our talk, and I'm fuming as I'm standing there because I didn't get the result I thought I was going to get. I worked a lot of hours during those six months <laughs> to make sure everything ran smoothly. And, you know, I clearly was doing a great job because they didn't bring in a store manager during that time. They just let me run it for a while, <laughs> you know. So anyway, the district manager at one point goes, you know, after criticizing me and then goes, you know, uh, hopefully we're going to see, you know, we're going to see a new Brian, right? And he's meaning it in a take my criticism and become better. And I see it as you just told me you want to see a new me. And it's like, okay, well, and I looked at him and said, you sure will. And from that point forward, I gave exactly the effort that I needed to give to meet the requirements of the job. And as soon as I could get out of there, which fortunately was Tony and I opening our comic shop, I was like, yeah, I'm out of here. And when I, the DM or the, the regional manager actually asked me why, because he didn't want me to quit. And I told him, I said, it's just time. Like I'm, I'm, I'm burnt out of this place. And it was true. Like there was no, like, from that point, me staying there wasn't really fair to myself or the company. I wasn't concerned about it being fair to them. I was concerned about it that I was just going to go in there and be mad and resentful and hate going yeah. to work. And I was like, I need a change of scenery. It's like if I had gone to another place after that, I would have pro- I would have set those boundaries. I would have been like, yeah, I'm not doing this unless I get something in return. Like, because I, why should I? You know? It's, you know, it's like the places that pay somebody salary but want you to work 80 hours a week. It's like, mm, you're not really paying me fairly here. Like, you know, like if a few extra hours is one thing, but 
yeah. So, you know, like I said, it's sometimes you just need a reset. Jen's gone through that too. She's actually talked about where she just needs a different environment because it just, it just doesn't, things don't line up like where she is now. The, the place is willy nilly with their boundaries and stuff. And she needs a place, you know, like I would be too. It's like with, and like you said, Heno, with like firmer boundaries, you know? Yeah. Because when you have firm boundaries, you know, you, you go, okay, that's a wall. That's a wall. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's it a roof. Makes life easy. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you can't, if they're not provided for you, try to create your own. Mm hmm. And, and yes, there's, like I said, there's always a bad manager. There's always yeah. somebody that, that, that is going to screw things up, but you can do the best to create your own boundaries. You can, you, you know, everyone has a right to establish within themselves, you know, the things that, that it, and what it comes down to is it comes down to the things that we can control. Yeah. And the one thing we control is our expectations. Yeah. Yeah. And, and stop expecting things from other people. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're totally right. I went through that a long time ago. This is not quite the same thing, but, um, to where I used to project what I feel I would do in a situation on others. Yes. And yes. I would constantly be disappointed because exactly. somebody wouldn't do what I would do. And in my how head, you would do it. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, in my head, it's like, well, I feel as though I'm a person with pretty high morals. Um, and, uh, I feel like or it, it, ethics, not morals. Jeez. Um, I feel like I'm a person with high, you know, high ethical character. And I feel like when somebody doesn't do what I would do I, in my head, it was like, well, basically like you're, you're less than. And over time, it's like, wow, that isn't true at all. That just like you said a while ago, it's like, all that means is they don't do it the same way as me. That's it. Yep. Um, and the sooner you quit putting your, like projecting yourself onto other people, and it isn't about lowering your standards. It's about actually assessing and applying appropriate standards. Yes. Because somebody else may think they're holding themselves to a high regard, but you maybe hold yourself to a, a higher regard. Yeah. But you're both good people. You know, it just means, you know, and you shouldn't really judge the other person for it. So, and, you know, it just makes you a jerk anyway, because, you know, people catch on to that. You know, <laughs> I have a friend that's notorious for this and, and it's difficult, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. And it, it was the, my, it's the one thing I learned from a therapist, you know, it's like, it, it's amazing how this was news to me. Other people don't have to do things the way that you do them. Yep. They never have to learn any of the lessons that you think <laughs> that they should learn right. and they can go the rest of their lives that way. Yeah. And be perfectly happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's it's a tough lesson to learn um, yeah. because it, and, and it's an ego thing, honestly. It's like we've it talked it so really many is. times. You, it's fighting your ego, which is a tough fight. <laughs> yeah. And and there's so much the, – and, and where the, the ego manifests itself in some interesting ways and, and this is where I just love Buddhism and this whole idea that there's no such thing as permanence. Nothing is permanent. Yeah. It's this idea of permanence that that creates the the isms in this case where you think like only you can do this job. Nobody else will ever do it. Right. Trust me. Somebody else will do it. Totally. Yeah. The whole place might be different, but the job's going to get done. Yeah. And it's because you're not permanent. The pla nothing's permanent. The place could fall and and you're right. You know what? The place could fall apart because you're no longer there. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's going to eventually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. It 5 years, 10 years, yeah. 15 years, 20 years. Everything Someday dies. Something's going to happen. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Everything dies. Doesn't matter what it is, it dies. So, yep, exactly. Um, and when we can finally let go of that, because this is all about self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. It's about it's about an, an ordinate sense of self. 
Yeah. And, and it's, the whole, what I love is when you use the, the, the theory of relativity in Mm. this regard. Yeah. It's, these things are, and meaning that everything is relative to the point of view that you're looking at, you know, at which you're looking at them. Right. And that if you if if you take into consideration what it's like in 50 years, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. 500 years, 5000 years. It only matters to us right now. Right. And so that's why I like these simple concepts of one day at a time. Look down at your feet. Where you know, where are you standing? Where are you sitting? Mm-hmm. That's all that matters is the, 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 the tasks that's in front of you. What's the next indicated thing that needs to be done? Yeah. And, and, and the rest of it, you're just making it up in your head. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Distorted thinking. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I, everybody I, does. This is one of those that I think we probably, a, a lot of people are guilty of a lot of the things we've talked about on this one, you know. Yeah. Not and, that it's bad. I, it happens, you know. It, well, it is bad or can be, but, you know. I have all sorts of opinions on how things should be run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. And, and and what's the best way to do things and this and that and that and, and, and yada, yada. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you when I'm when I'm I'm truly my happiest, when I'm my most happy is when I'm just I'm 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 just in the back rowing. And somebody else has got the oar and steering the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think that's I mean, the it, thing too. You know, it's like it—it it really is. It is easier. I don't want to minimize it, but it's like it's easier to be a follower than a leader for sure. Like you can. It's like when people ask me about working the video store I worked at, you know, and I was like, it was a great job until I got into management. Because when you get into managing, you have to start. Com- paying attention more to the corporate garbage you know yeah. you start having to consider you know profit and loss and blah 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 things that you don't have to when you're just a, a, a you know an hourly grunt you know you just go in you do your job you go home there's that's it you don't have to worry about you know yeah. covering shifts and blah 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 so it's um it's like yeah it, it is a great job until you get to that point then not so much <laughs> yeah um I think it's interesting that you mentioned about how this is <clears throat> like the the selfishness of this, right? Because it's funny because the cure to it is also selfishness because that you have to start setting those boundaries, which it's selfish, yep. but it's more self care selfish again. It's, yep. That's you know, it. That's you know, it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's caring for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it is selfish, you know, it's going to be seen as selfish, but like, you know, as I, like, I hate that selfish is a bad word essentially. Cause it's not always, you know, like in that scenario or like when we talked about our, um, um, solitude, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I have to have that. Like I'm, yes, I'm being selfish, but if I don't, I'm going to be run down or I'm going to not be in a good place tomorrow, the day after or whatever. So same with this is it's like, <clears throat> I say, look, yeah, I'm being selfish. You are staying, staying later and I'm not, I'm being selfish. You're right. But I have to, because if I don't, I'll come in tomorrow and I, I won't be worth a dang all day. Whereas if I go home now, I can come in and really hit it hard from minute one. You know, because I can go home, get a night, you know, relax, get some sleep, whatever. You know, whereas the other part, if I get home at seven, eight o'clock at night, I still got to eat, unwind, try to get to sleep. You know, it's, it's like I said, self care, and and you know, like we've said, I don't know how many times. You know, you 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 can't be of service to others if your battery's empty. You know, it's it's too important. Um, also. <clears throat> It's interesting to me, <clears throat> excuse me, how I've, I've, over the last three weeks, I've had a conversation with somebody various times now about how it amazes me how much people undervalue their time. And I think this falls into that a little bit too, is that people don't put enough value on their time. 
You know, like in your life, like the one thing nobody ever has enough of, time. So it should have a high premium on it. If you want me to stay longer at work, that's why overtime exists. It's generally a higher rate, you know, because if they go, hey, we need you to stay extra hours and you go, yeah, no, <laughs> you know, and they go, well, we'll give you time and a half. You go, oh, OK, well, now it seems more worth the sacrifice. And with a lot of this other stuff, it's the same thing. You know, like Jen said, you know, if you're staying until a certain amount of time, but you're not making any extra money and no one asked you to. It's different if you're asked or whatever, if it's a mandatory overtime like some jobs have. But if you just stay of your own accord for no extra money, you're you're severely undervaluing your time. You know, and it's something I think a lot of people need to take better control of. You know, it's one of the few resources we still control. You know, and like I said, if you just give it away, that's what's going to be expected. Oh, you stayed over three hours yesterday. You can't stay over three hours tonight, too? Next thing you know, five days a week. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's, you know, <sighs> think more of yourself or not yourself, your time. Sorry. I mean, yeah. That well, it, and it comes down to valuing yourself. Yeah. And that's really what it's about. Mm. It's, it's, it, it, this is, this is where the, we were talking about with the money episode, you know, the under earning. Yeah. The, these are where these concepts come from is not valuing yourself and your time. And, and, you know, if, if motive is just so important to look at in these situations, mm -hmm. if you are, you know, worrying about not getting what you feel like you, you know, deserve, or you're in fear about losing something that you have, then you're probably not in the right place. Right. Meaning that that the as far as the inside job goes, yeah. You know, if you're coveting what others have, or if you're if you're you know, and if you have these fears about these things, then 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 it's it's worth doing a little work on yourself, and and seeing how you can you know how you can get yourself a little more centered. And that ten, you know, my experience is that when I the when I did that work, I stopped being I, I stopped falling into a lot of these traps that sure. that are that are you know listed here. It makes sense. Yeah, it's and you know um, they pointed out in there about like you know maybe getting talk therapy to help you with um, you know approaching other stuff. people and stuff. Um, but you know again, don't undervalue seeking out help to help you deal with this also, you know, that the yeah. therapist could be really good about helping you get through more, putting more value on your time yourself or, or, you know, appropriately assessing or assess, assessing, assessing your time. <laughs> I don't know why I enunciated it that way. Um, you know, so, uh, that's one of the things that I've picked up from therapy, even though it wasn't necessarily intentional at times is, you know, just some of the ways, things that she's told me and stuff, it really comes back to just valuing yourself. And I don't mean over or any, it just like I have horrible self-value and self-worth. So my therapist recognized that in me even before I was telling her about it, <laughs> you know, and has been kind of saying things and leading me like, you know, hey, do this. Make sure you're doing this. Don't forget these things, you know, that are – these are important. Don't let these things fall. You know, again, like a lot of it with her for a while was self-care stuff. You know, yeah. she's like, quit, quit putting yourself second all the time. You know, sometimes you have to put yourself first. Again, this, the selfishness, you know? So, yeah. All right. Yeah. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah. I like that one. That's why as soon as I saw that topic today, I was like, oh, I was like, I, cause I, I I was like, well, either we're doing this one this week or soon because it's something I knew all of us could bring something to. You know, I kind of wish Jen was here too, but, you know. Yeah, cause she has so much on this. Yeah. I think we were able to, you know, from what we've talked to her about and stuff, you know, able to give some of the examples that I'm sure she would have given too. But, <clears throat> yeah, it was, yeah, it's really, really interesting that that kind of uh, – just popped up the way it did had absolutely nothing to do with what's going on in life right now. I just saw it and was yeah. like, you know, we did the yeah. money thing last week. This kind of, I felt like this was a nice follow up to, 
to that stuff because, you know, for anyone new to the show, we don't always talk about, you know, mental illness type stuff. A lot of times it's just about, you know, wellness and value and overall just being a complete person. <laughs> yep, how are you getting through the day? Yep. So, all right. Well, if you would like to continue the conversation, as Jen says, uh, you hmm. can check our website out at thecrazylifepodcast.weebly.com. You can email us if you'd like to at thecrazylifepodcast at outlook.com. Um, if you have like a topic you'd like us to talk about, you know, please feel free to send them in. Um, or if you have like a good story to potentially tell, you know, to have a talk with us about, we'd love to, you know, consider that too. Um, oh, show. Yeah. You can find the show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod, uh, where I post when new episodes go up. You can find Jen on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G or at Dits with D Tits. Uh, all these things are in the show notes if you need spellings and whatnot. Uh, you can check out her other podcast at shakethesheets.com, which I'm pretty sure is a not safe for work podcast from what I've listened to. Um, so, you know, at least be, be careful with it. And how about you, Heno? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. Find me on Facebook and Messenger Heno Heiter. And uh, I think sometimes I'm just Slimo on Instagram, I think. And check out my other podcast if you're watching the Orville. Or if you've been watching Gotham, you can find us Gotham Lights, uh, where we finally finished it out and we got to meet Batman. Yay. <laughs> finally. Jeez. Um, <laughs> you can find you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. My other podcast can be found at salty underscore language or at saltylanguage.com. That show is definitely not safe for work. So uh, earbuds in. Um what am I forgetting? Oh, you can find our Facebook group over at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Um, we are part of the danger entertainment network, which can be found at danger entertainment.net. Uh, we're also part of the tangent bound network, which can be found at the tangent or geez can be found at tangent bound network.com. So, you know, please go check out those, uh, networks and see if there's some other stuff you may like. Uh, we would appreciate it if you would rate, review, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and, you know, tell your friends, share with anybody you think may get something out of this this show. You know, we I generally put the topic of the show in as the name of the show. So, you know, if you know something may pique their interest, you know, go ahead and forward that one to them. We would greatly appreciate it. And uh, our intro song was done by the lovely and talented Heno. Um, and, uh, if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to it. So it's, it's a good song. Um, and, and what have you, uh, Oh, what am I forgetting? Oh, if you need help, please, um, please reach out and ask for help. Um, there's so many people out there willing to help you. Um, you're not alone. Um, you know, just, I can't emphasize that enough. You know, if you feel you need help, you know, reach out, whether it's a doctor or a friend, family. Um, if you're having a mental health crisis, just please try not to be alone. Um, and please reach out, uh, for help. Um, also, uh, please reach out to your, just reach out to your friends, you know, maybe tell somebody you haven't talked to in a while, tell them, you know, you're thinking of them, you love them, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, just make sure they're doing okay. Um, especially, you know, check on your friends that have been going through something rough recently or the ones that always tell you they're fine because it's one of the very few commercials I actually uh, like for a medicine, uh, which is one. I can't remember what medicine is. It's irrelevant, but it's a, me a commercial where it shows a woman constantly with a sign that she holds in front of her face. It's like a smiley face. And, you know, when people are talking to her, she's holding that sign up, basically. And it's like, that is exactly what, you know, it's like a lot of times. So, you know, peel, peel away that mask and, you know, if you can, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, on that, just, um, you know, be, be nice to one another. We got enough, enough hatred and garbage going around. So try to spread some kindness 
and uh, make sure that you include yourself in that. You know, be nice to yourself. Whew. All right, Heno, you want anything else to say? You want to shut us down here? What's going on? Yeah, never let anyone treat you like regular glue. You're glitter glue. 